During embryological development, when the embryo is developing into that adult organism, there are four extra embryonic membranes that are formed. And these four membranes are eventually discarded by that individual following birth. Now, these four extra embryonic membranes include the chorion, the amnion, the lantois, as well as the umbilical vesicle. And in animals such as reptiles and birds, the umbilical vesicle is actually called a yolk sac because it contains a nutritious substance made of lipoproteins known as yolk. So in this lecture, we're going to focus primarily on the embryonic development of the human embryo. And to see what we mean by these four extra, mem extra embryonic membranes, let's take a look at the following diagram. So this diagram describes the developing fetus as well as the four extra embryonic membranes as they sit inside the endometrium of the uterus of that female individual, the mother. Now, the actual developing embryo is this structure here. And notice that the chorion is the extra embryonic membrane, is this structure that encloses not only the embryo, but also the other three extra embryonic membranes. So the chorion consists of cells that come from the trophoblast as well as the mesoderm germ layer. And the chorion functions in two important ways. Firstly, it creates a special fluid we call the chorionic fluid that is located inside the chorionic cavity, this space shown here. And what that fluid does is it absorbs some of that shock and the force that is experienced as a result of the outside environment. And what that does is it protects that developing embryo from any sort of damage. Now, the second function of the chorion is to create these chorionic extensions. And these chorionic extensions permeate through the endometrium and eventually they connect with the blood vessels of that female individual. And the chorion, these chorionic extensions, eventually develop into a structure known as the placenta. And the placenta plays a role in exchanging the nutrients, the oxygen, and the waste products between that developing fetus, the developing embryo and that mother. So these are the two functions of the chorion. Now let's move on to the embryonic membrane, the extra embryonic membrane that actually encloses that fetus itself. This is known as the amnion. So the amnion is an extra embryonic membrane that directly surrounds that developing embryo. And in this diagram, the amnion is this blue structure here. Now, the amnion actually consists of two layers. The outer layer is the layer that comes from the mesoderm germ layer, but the inner layer comes from the ectoderm germ layer. Now, the amnion basically produces, the cells of the amnion produce a special type of watery, uh, of watery fluid that is released into the amnionic cavity in the space between the amnion itself and that growing embryo. And what that fluid does does is it also protects that fetus by absorbing some of that shock so it cushions the fetus and prevents any damage from actually happening to the fetus. So this function is similar to the function of the chorion. But what the amnion also does is it prevents the embryo from drying out and it enables the embryo some freedom of movement. So it allows the embryo to actually move as it grows and that's important in the process of embryo embryological development. Now let's move on to another e extra embryonic membrane known as the umbilical vesicle. So in humans, the yolk sac is actually called the umbilical vesicle because it doesn't actually contain any yolk. So what the umbilical vesicle functions is, is in early embryological development, it actually helps produce some of the red blood cells. So it, produce some, it produces some of the blood that the fetus actually contains. Now the final extra embryonic membrane is the lantois. So in non-humans, this is a very important structure and it grows relatively large because what it does is it serves in waste disposal. So in non-humans, in reptiles and in birds, the lantois stores nitrogen containing byproducts within that structure and eventually following birth, that lantois is actually discarded. 
Now, in humans, the lantois is a small outgrowth of developing the digestive tract, and what it does is it basically helps create the blood vessels that line along that umbilical cord, and we'll discuss what the function of the umbilical cord is in the next lecture. So, these are the four extra embryonic membranes, the chorion, the amnion, the umbilical vesicle, and the lantois, and these four membranes are eventually discovered following the birth of that individual, in this case, the human being.